This video is not sponsored by Canada Dry. I drink so many of these, they should sponsor this video. Okay, so few weeks ago I posted a video, I'll post a link somewhere here, where I talked about my mistakes, uh, the mistakes I made while I was learning to code. And that video got a pretty good response, so I thought I should create another video where I talked about what you should do instead of what you should not. So this video is totally about the tips and tricks you can take uh, from my experience and from experience of other people. And yeah, let's get started. So when I started, I was more inclined towards the full stack process. So I was doing front end, I was doing back end. And so what happened during the interviews were uh, they were started asking me question regarding front end, back end, uh, database, and all those things because I put everything on my resume that I made a project uh, with React and the front end and Django at the back end, and I was using Postgres SQL and and all other uh, fancy tools. And so what happened was in the interview, they started asking me question regarding all these technologies. And I failed all those interviews because I think I spread myself too thin over there. So first tip, find niche, maybe find a language or framework and stick to it. Don't spread yourself too thin and you'll end up the position where I was. Tip number one, Pick one framework or one language and stick to it. And the second is get yourself out of tutorial hell. So if you are a beginner developer, you probably have an account with Udemy, or you probably have signed up on other tutorial websites like Scrimba, and you probably have started like few courses over there and then you end up doing few of them and you end up not completing most of them. And so what happened, you're just stuck in that process. So get yourself out. So what I did, so I picked one course in Django from Udemy when I started my career. And then I did that course for like five times. And what happened during the process that the course was getting older. I was making a lot of mistakes and I was thinking why I'm making mistakes because I'm doing exactly what uh, the instructor is telling me to do. But I was still getting uh, those bugs because, well, the, the course was outdated and it was not up to the, the latest version of Django they were using. So don't get stuck in that tutorial hell get yourself out and start building projects so when you start building project you will have real world problems the problem you will be facing in a job then you need to find a framework a mindset to solve those problems then you'll use different websites like stack overflow or you will go to the github and see uh, the PRs and discussion in the PR and see how they solve the issue. Make real world project and get yourself out of tutorial hell as soon as you can. And the next is create a system. How many times does it happen with you where you woke up pretty excited, got yourself a cup of coffee and put some lofty music on the side and the moment you start learning, you just lose your motivation. What went wrong here? You were relying on your motivation rather than on your discipline. It would be best if you had a schedule, my friend. You need a goal. So before you do anything, write your goals on paper and read them every day first thing in the morning. And that link to my next point. Coding is hard. Yes, sir. If no one has ever told you, coding is hard. It will require a lot of dedication and strategy to learn those things. And that's why software engineer gets paid so much because not everyone can do it. But how can you figure out like you can do it? If you are watching this video, that's probably half the battle. You, I think you already know what you want to do. You just need some help. And my help here is to get you understand that coding is hard and you need a lot of practice. So start practice, start messing up with the code base and that's the way you learn to code. There is no magic pill you can take or there is no like Canada dry you can drink to get you started with coding. So. Drink Canada Dry and spend countless hours on front of a laptop and exercise your fingers. Yeah, that's what you should do. But I want you to practice that. I want you to work on all your skills. That involves speaking, writing, and presenting yourself first in the interview and later on the job. The next is mental model. Mental model will help you learn a new language and actually retain the information you feed to your brain. As I said earlier, Coding requires a lot of mental energy and practice. There is no good substitute for that, but having a mental model will help you how to think about a problem and further its solution. 
every framework is slightly different in implementation and has its own mental model. So the mental model is a kind of a strategy you need to follow in order to come up with a solution of a given problem. So rather than cramming things or trying to remember a lot of things, focus on mental model, focus on the details, put your focus on how things move in your language or how data process in your language. And that will help you maybe 10 times more than just simply remembering how to use if statement or how to use a for loop and so on. You can always Google those things. You can always Google how to use a for loop, but you, you can't Google the mental model. And that thing comes from a lot of practice. You need to have a strategy in, in your mind where you can think about a problem and comes up with a solution. And in that process, you can use Google, you can use Stack Overflow, you can use anything. But the mental model will give you a, a strategy and you can use that strategy on different problems. I think this alone will require a whole new video. So I'll probably make a video on how to think about coding solutions. And the next is reading documentation. Reading documentation is actually a skill. Don't depend too much on video tutorials because they are long and overly detailed. For most things, decent documentation will give you enough knowledge. So someone gave me this advice when I and when I was starting my journey that instead of depending on a framework, I should more depend on a language. Because if I learn the core concept, if I understand the core concept of a language, I can apply that to a framework. And he also uh, asked me not to use frameworks in the beginning and find your novel solution. You, you can certainly do that, but the pitfall here is it might take you a long time to understand a basic thing. So my advice is yes, have a good understanding in the language, but simultaneously have some knowledge of a framework. Maybe it's React, maybe it's Ruby on Rails, I don't care but pick one language and one framework that will help you a lot. And the next is learn Git and Stack Overflow, of course. Anywhere you go, you will find Git. There is no escape of that. And sooner you learn it, the more confident you will be in your day job. You should start posting your projects on GitHub so that in an interview, you can talk about them and they can poke around and ask questions about things you built by yourself. And trust me, it's a good strategy. Rather than an interviewer asking you some random question, you should want them to ask you question regarding stuff you built. So maybe in the interview, you can uh, you can point them that I made these projects and it's on my GitHub and they can right away open that on your, on their laptop and ask you question like how you did that or why did you use that library? Why did you use that framework? And this is actually will be good for you because you will be more confident in answering those questions rather than answering some random JavaScript or Python questions. So always put your projects on GitHub and try to force or try to like nudge your interviewer to talk about that more so that you have more leverage. That's another tip for you. And last but not the least, <laughs> apply for jobs. Apply for jobs even if you're not prepared because trust me, no one is prepared. Don't doubt yourself unnecessarily. If you think you have done enough practice, it doesn't cost you to apply for jobs and actually start giving interviews. The good thing back then I did was that when I was learning to code, I was simultaneously applying for jobs. Even though I think just after three or four months, I started applying jobs because the requirements were like HTML, CSS and some JavaScript and I applied. I didn't get those jobs, but they interviewed me and then that gives me more exposure what kind of question they're going to ask. So I wrote them all these questions. And the next time I went for another interview, most of the time they asked me the same questions. So I was more confident and I had more experience. So always, always start applying as soon as you start learning because that will give you enough chances to get the job. And now the bonus tip for you. There is a misconception in the web development world that you need to master JavaScript or CSS to get your first job. I can tell you how many junior position that don't even require you to have more than basic JavaScript knowledge. So how to find these jobs? So this may require a whole new video, which I'm currently working on. Uh, and I'll explain how to get those jobs and uh, how to make your resume uh, and how to practice for uh, those kind of position where they don't want you to do a lot of JavaScript work, but they want someone to have enough knowledge about HTML and CSS. So yeah, so that was it. And hope you have liked this video. Uh, the overall purpose of this video is to give you some suggestion so that you can increase your chance to get your first job. If you like this video, um, 
feel free to subscribe it and feel free to drink this Canada dry. And yeah, that's it from my end. And I'll see you next time in next video. Cheers.